You know, Nation, what's going on? It's CJ Wilson here with Dope Talk. Here to bring you some quick hitters. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see a Mike Norvell video in regards to the process of him, you know, taking the Alabama job. Of course, that's before we get started. Dope Talk is brought to you by DashFi, the modern charge card for digital ad spend. DashFi is a business to business corporate expense program card that gives you the highest cash back on the market starting at 3%. Most companies start you off at 1.5. We're going to double that up with DashFi at 3%. Again, if you're not getting your cash back for your corporate or corporate business expenses, what are you doing? Apply for the Dash Five Mastercard today. You could go ahead and do that in the um, in the description. The uh, link is in the description. Check out Dash Five; they'll take care of you. Like I told you guys, there's a lot of fireworks in the portal. In the last video we dropped, and said there'd be some more quick hitters in regards to the portal. Well, here we are. Um, a couple more transfers that would that have announced to FSU some big time playmakers that's going to help out. I've seen the complaints. A lot of you guys have been complaining about offensive line and defensive line. Well, here we are. We got um, offensive line and defensive line. I told you guys some of, that, some of that stuff will be coming pretty soon. And lo and behold, the staff has been working to get those guys in. The first kid we're going to talk about is Tamiwa Duraje, defensive end from West Virginia, 6'4", 280 pounds, has three years left of eligibility, posted 23 tackles this past season, six tackles for loss and three and a half sacks for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Really explosive kid. I like this kid. I think he could be a dynamic playmaker. in the beating out the uh, Auburn Tigers and the Miami Hurricanes for his services. Um, again, again, I like this kid a lot. Big kid off the edge, really big, athletic. Also, as far as pass rush situations, we can also knock him down inside to get more of a pass rush situation or on third and long situations, right? So if you want to knock him down inside and bring in an extra D in along with Patrick Payton, along with Joshua Farmer, you have a dynamic pass rush pretty much not necessarily duo, but just across the board with all four, you get pressure on the quarterback. Pretty much similar to what we did in the past with um, former, um, I guess not former, de former defensive tackle, but former defensive ends that are on the bigger side that can do both in regards to rushing the passer from the outside and inside. If you look at Demarcus Walker and what he did at FSU, certain times with, with, within his tenure at FSU, we bumped Demarcus inside to get more of a pass rush on those third and long situations. So, again, I feel like FSU, and it's a matchup thing, too. If you get a guy like Demarcus Walker along with Tamiwa matched up against a, a guard who's not as athletic and can move or as longer arms as an offensive tackle, you can have more of a dynamic matchup in regards to winning those pass rush matchups and getting back to the quarterback pretty easily. So I can see FSU, FSU doing similar things in regards to uh, Tommy Wall and, and, and what he brings to the table. Again, three years left. I really like this kid just scratching the surface. Wants to come to FSU. He said it specifically. Wants to come to FSU and get coached up more on his technique and things like that. And this is the right place to do it with all the defensive end success we had in the past with Coach John Pachua's um, coaching that department. So, again, really good getting to, uh, to, to Miwa. Moving on, another defensive end. I like this one a lot, too. Um, and bear with me. Sonoe Loahia. Sonoe Loahia, defensive end out of Oregon State, 6'3", 265 pounds. Uh, second team all Pac-12 this past season. So, again, he got really active this past season for the Oregon State Beavers. Made a lot of plays, 47 tackles, eight and a half tackles for loss, one and a half sacks. Good enough to make second team all Pac-12. Um, again, high motor kid, really high motor, really high motor. Doesn't stop until the whistle is blown. And also, if you look at what we're bringing, 6'5", I'm mean, assuming 6'3", 265 pounds. A lot of beef in regards to the edge. Him and uh, Tamiwa. If you guys remember last year, we had Patrick Payton and we had Jared Verse. After those two, the defensive end production and also just the body types and what we had behind them wasn't that good, to be completely honest. So you brought it up. You bring in bigger guys on the edge that can, that can hold their own on the edge. In um, Sonohe, Tamiwa, and, of course, you have Marvin Jones Jr. already in the fold at 6'5", 250 pounds. The body types in the defensive end room is changing a lot. More bigger bodies that can bang and that can hold their own against the edge and set the edge. And also depth, right? Jared Burst played a lot of snaps last year. Um, of course, Patrick Payne played a lot of snaps last year and will play a lot of snaps this upcoming year. But when you add guys like Marvin Jones Jr., Stanohe, and Tamiwa, and I'm assuming, I'm not necessarily assuming, I'm, I'm hearing that we could add a possible one, one more edge within the transfer portal. We'll see how that plans out. But again, you're adding a lot of beef and a lot of bodies to rotate and stay fresh. I feel like this is going to be an interesting year for FSU in regards to their production on the edge and just how can I put this? Um, the production on the edge and just how many bodies we use to get the job done. There's different ways to skin the cat. 
you had your you had your Jerry Verse in the past, you had Jermaine Johnson in the past. I do think Patrick Payton is in line to take that next step to be one of the better defensive ends and just continue that trajectory for FSU. But you have a bunch of guys in the fold that can get the job done, correct? So we have a bunch of guys that's in the fold as far as you know, depth and guys that can be very productive. Some we haven't had an FSU in a long time. It's just very good depth, quality depth in the defensive end room. So I like this take a lot. Moving on to the offensive line. we got an offensive lineman, Terrence Ferguson, offensive guard from um, Alabama, the uh, Alabama Crimson Tide. can play offensive guard or center. 6'4", 320 pounds, played 11 games at, a, at Alabama, 175 careers. This is an interesting stat, right? He had 175 career snaps at Alabama with zero penalties. Um, two years left to play. FSU loses out on Casey Roddick and Dimitri Manuel in regards to the two guards. I think this could be an upgrade um, in regards to those two. A bigger body, right? 6'4", 320 pounds, dynamic and athletic, can move a little bit. He's very violent, very physical. Saw some um, games he played in, I guess, against UCF, and he did a very, very good job against the uh, UCF Bulls. So, again, I like this kid a lot. Uh, two years left to play. So, I think our we all know our run defense struggled a little bit, especially in the interior. I do think from a physical standpoint and an aggressive standpoint, you, you get a little bit better with Ferguson. So, shout out to Coach Alex Atkins um, for getting this guy in. Again, offensive line, defensive line, you guys will be asking for trench work. We've been getting very active in the transfer portal in both departments. Well, I'm not saying both departments, especially defensive line. Offensive line, just a couple – tweaks here and there and i think ferguson can definitely help you that help you within that department speaking of alabama we have an official visit this weekend from alabama running back rodell williams 5'10, 214 pounds um from alabama i like this kid a lot his this is last year only has one year left in the transfer portal he's the upcoming senior uh no, not necessarily one year left in the transfer portal excuse me he has one year left to play um, like I said, as he is a senior, totaled 400, 560 rushing yards and six total touchdowns this past season with Ala with Alabama, splitting uh, carries with other running backs. So, again, I like this kid a lot. I think he can be really physical, really, really physical and posing runner, along with patience and, and reading holes and making the right reads. We do lose Trey Benson, who was one of our, who was our physical, physically imposing runner. I'm not. I don't think Rodell would be to the degree as far as explosiveness as Trey Benson. But I think the steady yardage that they, that, that Rod, Rodell gets, average over five yards per carry at Alabama, that's going to be something we're going to see consistently. You know, with Trey Benson, it was a lot of it was a lot of plays where we got stuff, things like that. Um, a lot of plays, probably behind the line of scrimmage too. And then we have a big burst of 30, 40 yards, whoever it may be. I think Rodell, um, and of course Adam Ferguson as well too, to help out with the run with the. Uh, the uh, run blocking, I think it'd be a steady three to four, five, six, seven, eight, those type of yardage in regards to being ahead of the change and not necessarily getting behind the change due to certain situations. Uh, I like this kid a lot. Again, we lost three running backs this past season, two to the transfer report on CJ Campbell and Rodney Hill and one to Trey Benson in the NFL draft. To bring in Rodell uh, with one year left, I think it'd be very good to pair him with Lawrence Tour Philly and the backs that we do have. Um, I think it can be pretty dynamic. I'm excited about this kid. So we'll see if we can go ahead and close and turn him into a Seminole as well. Again, I like I like Rodell a lot. He will be taking his official visit to FSU this upcoming weekend. I'm pretty sure we have more information in transfer report on things like that. FSU is I don't I don't think FSU is completely done yet. Uh, we do know that there is a Nick Saban did end up retired from Alabama. So moving forward, it could be an influx in regards to portal additions from the Alabama Crimson Tide. That'll be something FSU will monitor moving forward, I'm pretty sure, and we'll see, you know, who ends up in the portal and if FSU pursues or not. But, again, once that time comes, you know, Dope Talk definitely got you covered. Let me let me know in the comments if you guys want to see a Mike Norvell video in regards to the process of him, you know, taking the Alabama job. Of course, that's been the hot topic of conversation these last couple of days as Nick Saban has retired. I do believe Mike Norvell is a candidate, but, of course, how serious of a candidate – well, I'm not going to say that. I will say that Mike Norvell is on their – list of candidates so to speak in regards to you know coaches they will be filling out and things like that we have the success that you've had the last couple of years at fsu 19 straight games things like that and let's think let's not get it twisted or confused alabama is the premier job in college football at this point blame period i do think it's the best job in college football so with the success that you had the last couple of years when the number one job in college football is interested in your head coach i think it's a good that i think that's a good thing for in regards to the what we're doing at FSU. So again, let me know in the comments if you guys want to hear more about this. Uh, go nose. Make sure you like this video. Subscribe to the channel.